just wanted to show you the box as it came in the mail directly um, so quick note if you were planning on sending this as a gift to somebody make sure you get a gift wrap because it will clearly state what's in the box that's pretty much how it came so we'll go ahead and open this And there it is. So it looks like what we have here is some documentation. Just a little bit of how to use it. Alright, turn it on. Product information, nothing special. <clears throat> and the Kindle Fire. Alright, so that aside, what else do we have here? Looks like just a USB. USB charger for the wall. That's everything. Okay, and while I'm at it, I also ordered the uh, Marware Kindle Fire casing. So this basically just came in a little envelope. I already opened it. But let's see about that. Pretty basic. Looks kind of like the iPad case from InCase. <clears throat> Feels really nice, smooth, light. Let's check out the Kindle Fire. There we go. Oh, must have turned it on. All right. Looks like we got our home screen here. Resetting that. <clears throat> Time is wrong, of course. Okay. Looks like we got some setup screens here. Let's see if we can get this. Okay, cool. It's asking me to connect to Wi Fi. And the first thing it's asking me for is the Wi Fi password for my network. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. Alright, now it's asking me to set the time zone, so it's already on Pacific time. So it says the latest Kindle software is being downloaded. Once it's complete, it'll only take a few minutes to restart your device. So we're going to go ahead and pause here, and we'll come back when this is done. Okay, we're about 90% done, and while I was waiting, uh, I actually just got an email from uh, the Kindle subscriptions telling me about my sub trial subscription to Maxim Magazine. I basically signed up for that magazine because I wanted to see how the magazines look on the Kindle Fire in full color. Alright, so now the Kindle is restarting. Verifying update package. So while we're waiting, we will look at the uh, connections and everything here. On the bottom you have the uh, micro USB port and the headphone jack. That appears to be the power button. On the top, we have two speakers. The back, it's uh, got a rubbery feel to it with Kindle uh, indented in there. It's an Amazon logo. And nothing on the sides. All right, the Kindle has started. It has already set itself to the right time. We're gonna go ahead and open it. And here we go. So it looks like we got a welcome page. It talks about the navigation bar at the top, which is where we'll be able to get 
everything we need, the new stand, the books, music, videos, documents, apps, the web. Let's scroll over here. Looks like we're in a tutorial right now. I don't need to go through all these. Just close that. When I bought this from Amazon, they said that it works directly out of the box. Didn't have to install any software, didn't have to do any uh, syncing or anything like that. So that is exactly true. Um, I downloaded some free books, including a uh, dictionary here. So it looks like the other two that were added were the welcome guide and the user's guide for the Kindle Fire. Oh, this looks like a document. Let's open that up and see what that looks like. It's a little note from the CEO of Amazon. Everything looks smooth. Runs really fast. We got a couple of the default apps here, IMDB, Facebook, Pulse, and Amazon, of course. Let's go ahead and try the internet here. I'll go to the web. Let's just go to Amazon.com. The internet itself isn't that bad on the browser. We can do multi-touch zoom. Let's go to Adobe.com here and check out the uh, flash capabilities. Go. This is the uh, one major complaint of all iPad and iPhone users is the lack of flash. Let's go ahead and rotate this. If we can watch this video, get an idea of the sound quality as well as the flash player. We actually have a bigger impact digitally today than we do on TV. We're happy with the decision to use flash and we're sticking with it because it gets us where we need to be. Obviously, Adobe Air has made a massive change in our environment because now we're taking our flash content and putting it up on the website but now filtering it through air and putting it on android devices looks like it works good all right let's go back to the home so i'm gonna go ahead and check out the maxim magazine i know everybody's been waiting to see that oh we got to download the first issue we'll come back when that's done I signed up for a 14 day trial of this magazine just because I wanted, I was curious to see what a full color magazine looks like. If you look in the Kindle store right now, this magazine is only available for the Fire. So that tells me it's going to be full color and most likely functional with the internet and whatever special features they might want to add. So let's go ahead and load that up and see what we got. Okay. So we now naturally we start on the cover. We can scroll in. And looks, look like, looks like you have all the same basic ads that you would find on any Maxim magazine and now we have a table of contents doesn't look like those are functional where you can click on them you just tap through it you can make it full screen zoom in zoom out and then down here we have uh, a scroller so we can go to any page in the magazine it is the full magazine from cover to cover with all ads and images and everything page by page that was a quick look at what magazines look like on the Kindle Fire. Alright, so let's review the operating system a little bit. First of all, it's very fluid. It moves very smoothly, very quick, uh, almost to a fault. I've noticed a few times when I've tried to open a uh, book or something, it actually wants to scroll to the next item. So that might just take some getting used to, but it is very, very touchy even to try to land on one item. You have to go very slowly, but as you can see, super fast. What I wanted to go over here really quick is the setting. When you look at the side, the top, the bottom, there's no volume rocker like there is on the iPad. There's no side switch that can allow the uh, locking of the screen, which uh, is kind of a drag if you're used to that on the iPad. And I'm a former iPad owner, so these are the things that I was looking for. To get to the settings of that stuff, you go up to the little gear icon at the top here. See if we can show you that. Yeah, right there. And this brings up the different settings that you can change. So right now it's on volume. So you can take this and you can adjust the volume, of course. Uh, you can do the same with the brightness. So that's the lowest brightness. There you go with that. Uh, Wi-Fi obviously allows you to connect to different networks. And then there's where you can lock the screen rotation. So. It won't accidentally rotate on you. When you drop down the settings here at the top, you have your standard volume, brightness, Wi-Fi, your sync option, and then you have more. More allows you to look at your help and feedback, change your account settings for Amazon, adjust the sound settings, the display, security, applications, date and time, wireless network, Kindle keyboard. All right, so all in all, I like the Kindle Fire from what I've seen so far. Um, 
Most people are calling this an iPad killer. I t certainly don't believe it's an iPad killer, but it's definitely a competitor. The person that would actually want to buy something like this is someone who's looking for an e-reader that has extra features like the web applications, the color screen, all the apps you can get through the Android store, and uh, the internet functionality of sorts. So if, if you were looking to buy a Kindle and you wanted something more than just your regular e-reader, the Fire is definitely the way to go. However, if you're looking at an iPad because you need the 3G service or because you, everything else you have is Apple and you like the syncing of the iOS devices and all that, the Kindle is going to be an issue for that particular user. So all in all, I do like this device.